Hello, and thank you for visiting the Spy Geeks YouTube channel presented by SpyGeeks.com. The purpose of this video is to provide a brief introduction to the tracking platform of the Sky Patrol TT-8850 Patrolman Real-Time Tracking Unit. In order to locate your Patrolman Real-Time Tracking Unit via the tracking platform, we'll want to navigate to www.skypatrol.com. On the Sky Patrol website, you'll notice a customer login button to the right hand side here. We'll simply click on that button, enter in the username and password that was supplied to us, and then click the login button to log into the tracking platform. Once the tracking platform loads, you'll notice off to the left hand side here a units tab that has an IMEI number listed here. This IMEI number should correspond to the IMEI number that is located on the outside of your Sky Patrol package. To locate this tracker and get its last reported position, simply put a check mark in this box here. And then instantly you'll see a green icon to indicate the patrolman's last reported position. This may or not be the this may or may not be the current position simply because the patrolman may have been powered down at this location or it may have entered in an er into an area where there is not good cell phone coverage. Once the unit powers back up, or regain cell phone signal, the unit should then update within five minutes and report its current location. One of the most important features of our Patrolman real-time tracking unit is its ability to create geofences. For those of you that do not know, a geofence is basically a virtual uh, perimeter set up around a location where we can be alerted to any movement of the tracker into or out of that location. For instance, if we have a child that's supposed to be going to school, we can set up a geofence around the school, and if we have the tracker on his or her vehicle, we'll be alerted when the tracker enters into or leaves that location. To set up a geofence, we'll zoom in our map here a little bit, and we'll try to draw a geofence around this boundary here, of West Main to the north, Lindsay Street to the south, and 36th Avenue to the west and 24th Avenue to the east. To draw a geofence down here we'll click on our draw a geofence box. That will change, put a plus sign in the box letting us know we can start drawing out our map. To draw a geofence on the map we'll simply click on one point, move the cursor to draw to, or to locate a second point, click on that point, move our cursor up to the northeastern boundary, click on that point. We'll zoom this back out. Come over here to our northwestern boundary and then back down here. Uh, to complete our geofence though, we'll simply click on these, this beginning point and a new tab will open. Allowing us to name our geofence. For this demonstration, we'll say this geofence is representative of our child's uh, work area. We'll hit next. It's going to ask us to select a condition either when the tracker enters into a location, leaves a location, or both. We'll select both for this report. Email and SMS address, so we'll type in our email address and our phone number. and then it'll select the unit we want to apply our geofence to. If you have a fleet of vehicles, maybe you have a common terminal where the units are going to be entering and, into, and leaving during throughout the day and you want to be notified when those units enter or leave that terminal, uh, you could apply the geofence to a whole subfleet if you'd like. Once we check off our tracker here in this box, we'll hit assign to assign it the geofence. We'll click finish and that will bring us back to our Google Map tracking platform where we can view our geofence on the map. To see a list of geofences we've set up, we can simply click on the geofences tab here and you'll see the child's work area geofence we just created is listed here. If we would like to change the uh, the events triggering our geofence, we can simply come up here to the admin icon click on events and alerts and then you'll notice our 
child's work area is listed twice here, one for the going in and one for going out of that geofence we've set up. To change the parameters of these geofences, we can simply come over here or click on the geofence to the left and then change the uh, attributes of that geofence here. For instance, maybe we want the geofence to start after an hour. So after an hour being in that area, now it's going to We'll save it. Now it's going to alert us after the tracker has been in that area for an hour. We can have days where we'd like to ignore that geofence. Maybe on the weekends those geofences don't matter. We can select our parameters here and then again you'd save that. You can add, change, or delete the email and SMS addresses that you've entered in previously right here. And then if you'd like to delete the geofence altogether, um, the way to do that is you would have to come again to the events and alerts tab under admin, select the parameters of the geofence and then delete these one by one. And now our geofence, it's still going to be listed here on the home page, but we can now go ahead and delete that geofence if we'd like. Can ask us, are you sure you want to delete the selected geofence? We'll hit OK. And it says the geofence is successfully deleted. And you can see here now no geofences are found. To see a list of previously stored or recorded locations, we'll simply come up here to the reports icon and click on it and this will bring up a reports menu. We can select one of the available reports here in this box. The three that you're probably going to be using the most will be the last 10 positions, location history, and possibly the events report. To open up a report, simply click the report, check off the IMEI number of the tracker that you want to run a report on, once it's over in the include units box, we'll simply click run report and the report should generate. The last 10 positions report does exactly as the name suggests. It reports the last 10 positions reported from the patrolman real-time tracking unit. To get more information about these points, you can see you obviously right here have the IMEI number, the time that the point was recorded, the status or the event that triggered the report, the speed, the heading, and your approximate address. To see the point in Google Maps, we'll simply click on the Google icon, and that will bring up a Google Map with our point located on it, giving us some more information, latitude and longitude, and if possible or available, a street view. Now there's not a street view available for this point, but if there was one available, we could simply click on Street View, and the Street View would open over here to the left. If you wanted to see all of these locations displayed on Google Maps, we could hit Display Locations. And what will happen here is that the points will start mapping out on Google Maps. We'll probably want to get a closer look here, simply because the points are within five miles of each other, so we can zoom in here and we can notice that the points have been drawn out here. If you would like to export the report to Excel, possibly for historical tracking or whatnot, you could do so. You could also print a copy of this report or refresh the screen and see if any more points have been recorded. The second report that we're probably going to be using will be the location history report. Really the difference between location history and the last 10 is location history is capable of giving you many more points than the last 10. To view the location history report, we'll click on location history, select our tracking unit, select the date and times where we want to view the report from, so we'll say September 17th through September 30th. Make sure our unit is over here, and then click run report. You'll notice on here there's 18 points instead of 10. It's 
can give you very similar information, your unit number, reporting time, status, speed, heading, approximate address. Again, we can export it, display the locations on a map, print the report, uh, and then refresh, which probably isn't going to do anything simply because this is a set date and time here. To get back to an uh, area where we can select a different date, we'll simply click Select Report, and then we can change the date accordingly. So instead of September 30th, maybe we want to go through October 17th, hit Run Report again, and it's going to give us a total of 76 points. And then you can scroll through them. You can see the same information here. Go to the next page. You'll see more points. And then we can go back and select another date and time as we want to. The system administration or admin page allows us to perform various system administration functions with our patrolman tracking unit. One of the things that we can do is set up maintenance alerts for our patrolman unit. If we were to assign this to a specific vehicle, we can set up uh, various maintenance reminders such as oil change, tire rotation, wheel alignments, things like that. It would alert us when those services are due. We can assign them to a tracker, uh, send us an email, reminder, and set a frequency here. Going back to the admin panel, uh, you could also track your fuel costs if you were to assign this tracker to a vehicle amount of gas you uh, used or added the cost was it a full tank and you can get a list of uh, data here you can also set up drivers uh, of your various vehicles simply input their name and information into this box and then you could uh, assign a driver to a vehicle if you'd like that would be done in the units management section. Basically here if we were to edit this, you can see here it says operator. We could then assign it one of the drivers that we have created from the other icon there. If we have multiple units, we can create multiple subfleets. For instance, if we were to have, say, an exterminating company, we have Lawn Spring, and exterminating for homes and businesses and things like that. Uh, we could create a, create a subfleet for say lawn spraying and then another for our exterminating trucks and then track those accordingly. If we want to have another user access our tracker, we can simply go to the users tab, hit add new and input the first and last name of the user and their information and then select the different uh, privileges that would be available to them. To create privileges and change privileges, you can come here to the Privileges tab, and then you can set up the different types of privileges available to a specific group of individuals.